Hi guys, I'm Mr. Bo, and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at a brand new Game Informer article in which they gave us their impressions of certain features and new changes coming in the Taken King. Now if you guys want to go read the full Game Informer article for yourself, there are a whole 5 pages of information, then you can click the link in the description below and that will take you over there. But I have highlighted things that I think are most important from this article and I'm going to be letting you guys know what they are right now. So let's start off with gear. Now apparently in in the first mission you're going to be finding green weapons that will outpower the best raid gear from year one so this is kind of crazy the green items you're going to be finding on the first mission are going to outpower the old stuff you already have so this is going to hopefully kind of help people who are worried about not being able to upgrade their old legendary stuff you're going to be finding stuff which is already going to outpower the stuff you have on at the moment so that's really cool to see game informer then talked a little bit about the dreadnought so the Dreadnought is going to be full of disappearing platforms and hidden alcoves and it's going to challenge your platforming skills more than other areas. Now not only are you going to be fighting the Taken on the Dreadnought, you're also going to be fighting a bunch of Cabal who are engaged in their own fight against Oryx's forces. So that is nice to see there is going to be a variety in enemies and you're not just going to be fighting the Taken all the time. Now the Taken King is going to have a ton of brand new quests some of which won't even open up until you hit level 40. Bungie is also separating the campaign into two sort of sections. The first is split up into eight lengthy story missions. After that comes the Taken War, which will introduce brand new missions. Some of them are really challenging. Game Informer also talked about a brand new way to upgrade some of your weapons. So there's gonna be a new thing called Sacrifice, in which you are able to sacrifice weapons you have at the moment in order to upgrade other weapons. So perhaps you have a duplicate of an exotic, you can sacrifice one of those exotics in order to upgrade the other one. Also Game Informer talked about ghost shells. They came across some brand new ghost shells, for instance someone came across an orange and blue coloured scheme. Ghost shells are now going to be able to boost your light level, they're also going to be able to boost your intellect, discipline or even strength and some ghost shells will even have the ability to sense out nearby spin metal or other resources and there was even a perk that offered increased glimmer for killing the hive. So ghosts are now going to be a big part of destiny, you're going to be able to upgrade them to get certain perks that will help you in certain scenarios. Now let's talk a little bit about the tower and what new things are going to be there. So firstly there is going to be a brand new kiosk which is actually in the game already. It came yesterday and it is located by Eva Levante. Now at the moment it has special orders but when the Taken King comes out that will change. What it will actually show is all your shaders and all your emblems. And there's a really cool feature, it will show you all the shaders you don't have and how exactly you can actually get them. So this means you no longer have to store them in your vault freeing up that space which is really good because there's going to be a ton of stuff to store in your vault when the Taken King comes out. Bungie are also making some changes to Banshee the gunsmith. He's going to help kick off your journey to find the brand new exotic fusion rifle which fits in your heavy slot called the Sleeper Simulant. If you guys want to go learn more about this weapon, you can click the link in the description below and that will take you over to a video in which I talk about that and tell you exactly how you're going to be able to get this. Now not only will Banshee send you on that mission, he's also going to have his own reputation system. In order to earn reputation with him, you'll need to complete certain bounties with particular weapons that he gives you. Once you've hit a certain reputation gear, you can then order Arms Day weapons. These are special legendary weapons from one of the new foundries. You put in your order, wait for the day of the week, and then you can go and pick up your new toy. But that's not the only thing that's changing. Vanguard and Crucible marks, which you use to buy most stuff in the game at the moment, are now being replaced by legendary marks. All you'll need is legendary marks to buy legendary gear. It's really simple and gets rid of the need for having certain marks to buy certain items. They are also getting rid of Hydronic Essence, Plasteel Plating and Sapphire Wire, which are class specific materials. Instead, they are going to be replaced with armor materials, just one material for all characters. In fact, if you have a ton of Hydronic Essence, Plasteel Plating or even Sapphire Wire, you will be able to trade these in for armor materials as soon as the Taken King launches from the Vanguard Quartermaster. Game Informer also talked about a brand new consumable you are going to be able to get from Xur. So this item is called the Three of Coins, and when you buy it, 
it will boost the chance of an exotic drop on the next boss you fight. This will give players a way to spend their strange coins that they've been holding up and it will also give them a way to get more exotic drops from boss fights which is really cool to see. Now let's move on to strikes. So the new strikes with the Taken King are going to have a load more replayability. In fact some of the encounters that you'll go through in some of these strikes will be different each time with there being two to even three different ways they could show up. Bungie has even recorded multiple versions of dialogue meaning you won't get the same voiceover every time. This is really cool to see because some Sometimes it can be a bit stale doing the same strike over and over again, but this will definitely give it more replayability. Not only that, strikes are now going to have a sort of light raid mechanic to them. They won't be too complicated in order to stop people from grieving, but they will be just enough to make it something different from the strikes we've already played before. And finally with strikes we're going to be seeing some brand new playlists and some changes to the Nightfall. So firstly there's going to be the Vanguard Legacy Strike playlist which is basically a list of all the strikes from Vanilla Destiny as well as the Dark Below and the House of Wolves expansion all in one playlist. There's then going to be the Ursa Strike playlist which is a list of random heroic strikes that will award players with legendary marks and legendary engrams. And finally Vanguard Mimosa which is a list of strikes all pulled specifically from the Taken King. So if you guys want to play all the new strikes, then this is the playlist for you. As for the Nightfall, it's going to be getting a little bit of a change. Each week it's going to have handcrafted modifiers, making it a little bit easier or maybe even a little bit harder, depending on what strike you're playing. And the final thing we're going to be talking about is the Crucible. And this is mainly about bounties. We're going to be seeing a ton of brand new bounties in Crucible for different things. For example, there's going to be dedicated bounties for your class each day. There's going to be fire team bounties that you need to complete with your friends. There's going to be featured playlist bounties, so you'll need to play a certain game type in order to complete some of these bounties. The Trials of Osiris is now going to have three bounties every week, which is something that I've wanted for such a long time. And there's even going to be weekly bounties that will come with big rewards. So this is all exciting stuff and a ton of new stuff coming with the Taken King which gets me super excited. If you guys want to go read the full article, again 5 pages of information, this is just what I've picked out from it, you can click the link in the description below. Let me know what you guys think of all these changes and brand new features, what gets you most excited for the Taken King, let me know in the comments below. If you guys missed my previous video in which I went through Hotfix 1.2.0.5, went through all the patch notes, Tess Everest has temporarily left the tower and the brand new kiosk that I talked about earlier is now by Eva Levante. You can click the link on screen or in the description below. Feel free to give the like button a big old hug and subscribe for tons more Destiny The Taken King content and coverage. You can follow me over on Twitter at IamMrBo if you'd like. Hope you guys have an awesome day and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.